as anglers, we are always looking for an edge to get the most bites. And if you have smallmouth near you in the summertime, that's one way to do it. I love chasing smallmouth in the summertime for a couple real critical reasons. One, of course, smallmouth love rivers. When we're fishing rivers in the summertime, conditions can be more stable because the water temperature is a little more consistent. And when you have current, it puts them in predictable places. But the major reason that I love catching smallmouth in the summertime is because bright bluebird sunny days actually can help the bite for smallies. Well, why is that? That is because smallmouth are such acute visual predators. When that sun is high in the sky and you've got some clear water, they oftentimes will move up into the flats, get up into the shallows, and really use their keen eyesight to narrow in on their prey. Largemouth, we know, they do just the opposite. That bright sunshine, they get buried up in the cover and they're more active on the cloudy overcast days or the days with a lot of chop on the water. Well, I was just on a river float trip and where we put in our float boat, the water was only about probably 18 inches deep or so. And I gotta tell you what, immediately, right away, and it was extremely hot, the sun was very high in the sky, not a single cloud. Right away, we started seeing just smallmouth all over the place. Well, they could clearly identify their prey. And even though it was a hot day, we had a really fun day. So today I wanna talk a little bit about catching smallmouth in the summertime to possibly save your weekend, to save your day, and how we can present our lures to the smallmouth, especially in the current, to get them to bite. Probably the biggest thing that I've run across when smallmouth fishing is that I by far have the best luck when my baits look very, very natural. They're presented naturally. Yes, there are days where you can throw a chartreuse spinner bait and they will crush it. But especially when fishing rivers, I seem to do much better when my baits go with the current as natural as possible. I've spent a lot of time fishing clear rivers where I can see my bait and I can see how the smallmouth react to it. And if it is the least bit unnatural in its presentation, they just nose away for it and look for something else. If you know somebody that is a fly fisherman, a fly angler, they very much can relate to this because fly anglers are constantly mending their lines Line, pulling it over so their lures drift naturally with the current it makes such a huge difference. Well, as smallmouth anglers and the current, we need to consider the same thing thing. So when we're using some baits, and I, and I like to use Nico rigs and, and Ned rigs, stuff like that, on these rivers, you have to constantly adjust your weight to see, is it coming through the current naturally? Is it getting stuck on the bottom and not moving at all? Is it tumbling too quickly? Or does it have what would look like more a natural presentation of something flowing with the current, not you know, really bogged down on the bottom and stuck or just not shooting along so quickly that they're gonna completely ignore it. Does it look like some sort of creature that is alive that would be moving with the current in a natural manner? And you just have to keep playing with the weights and, and determine what looks best on that given day. And the tough part in a river situation um, is when that bottom structure changes or the river gets a little bit wider, the current changes. So you need to adjust your weights accordingly. If you're fishing in 18 inches of water and then the bottom drops out to six feet, that's gonna slow the current down a ton. Same thing with as far as the width of the river or if it's going around a bend. On the inside of the bend, the current's not going to be moving as quickly as on the outside of the bend. So always adjusting the weight can make a huge difference in your day on the water. And if you're using something like a Nico rig, where you can just use screws from the hardware store and screw them in and out of the plastic, man, you can adjust so fast, much, much quicker than if you were trying to put a nail in, pull a nail out, that type of stuff. So I highly recommend that. Now, as far as current goes, always, 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 always cast 
up into the current and let your lure come back with it naturally. It's, you're going to get so many more strikes that way. If you take a few extra minutes to position your boat properly or to adjust your position in the river if you're shore fishing or, or wading in the river, take that time. Make sure that you're casting up into the current and coming back with it. You're going to get so many more strikes. Also, if you are casting to the shoreline, if you're out there in a the boat and you're casting to the shoreline and you're bringing a lure back, like I also like to use a lot of soft jerk baits and paddle tails and stuff like that, still that same thing, cast back up into the current and bring that lure back with you. Um, if you even notice smallmouth when they're moving across a river system or a stream, as they cut across it, they will often lose ground with the current and then once they get into position, they will swim back upstream if they want to or need to. But even those smallmouth, as they're coming across, are losing ground with the current, stop and then come forward. Your lures need to be doing the same thing. If they're cutting up against the current, it's just something they don't see. I mean, there's days when they're super aggressive, you're gonna go ahead and get a bite, but you're gonna get many, many more bites if it's flowing with the current, looking natural. Also, when you're targeting smallmouth in streams and rivers, if they're out in an open rocky area that's clear of vegetation they seem to be much more aggressive and more likely to bite than if they're buried up in something like eelgrass when they get behind that grass they're more in a rusting type of a mode um, they will definitely still hit it like if they're behind a log or a rock and something comes floating over them most definitely they will still hit but when you see them move out from that cover and get into those rocky areas those clearer areas where they have a better line of sight man that's go time that is when you really want to get those lures presented into those spots because they are likely more aggressive than if they're sitting back behind something or buried down in that grass now we know since smallmouth are very much a visual predator color can make a big difference and this is where the great disparity comes in smallies there's some days that you know you got those natural looking you know those greens and browns and that is the ticket and then like i mentioned earlier there's other days i see that chartreuse in clear water and it just really fires them up and they go crazy. So make sure you mess around with the color and kind of adjust it and play with it and, and see which one is working the best, especially you got a partner with you in the boat or somebody else you're shore angling with. Have two different colors on and see which one works the best on that particular day. If you love fishing for smallmouth, you like fishing for bass on rivers, you may want to check out this video here about ways to catch many, many more bass on rivers. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.